All right, in this video, we're going to talk about classes. It's one of the most common questions that I get about QuickBooks is, what is this class, 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 they say. Why don't they call it department? I don't know. <laughs> I can't give you an answer to that. Um, but essentially, that's what class is. It is a way to segregate your business from the reporting standpoint uh, by department, if you want to call it that, by region, if you want to call it that. Uh, so it's just a way to segregate out your profit and loss. Now, QuickBooks does do a balance sheet by class now. It's not a true balance sheet by class, and it has some problems, especially in the equity section. But we're not going to focus on the balance sheet. We'll focus on the why classes, okay? A lot of people tell me they don't need them. So the terminology, again, think of it as a department. What is a way to segregate out your business, okay? What's a way that you want to be able to run a report and see X versus Y and then the total of X and Y or X, Y, Z, all right? Some good examples of departments. We have a company called QB Learning that y'all are listening to right now. We also have a store called the POS Warehouse. And we also have a service-based company called Adams QB. They're all under a single corporation. They are three separate areas of the business. They have different DBAs for two. And so I like to keep track of my books personally as classes there. So I've got three separate classes. I can run a profit and loss for each individual area of my business and then also run the total for all three together, okay? We also have, I have clients that segregate out by internal departments. So marketing versus manufacturing versus admin versus owners, okay? So that's a good way to think about it too. I have a client that does grants and they set up a class for each grant. They do that because you can set up a budget by class, okay? So that's a good way to think of it too. So there's a ton of different ways. One thing I want to point out before I go into setting up classes and think, you know, some of the benefits of it there is you want to use class in a way that QuickBooks does not already create for you. What do I mean by that? QuickBooks allows you to have, in the customer center here, you can have, uh, I'm sorry, I'm in a job, additional information here. You can have your customer type, okay? And we can run a report and say profit and loss and modify this and filter it by customer type commercial. So you don't want to create a report or you, you don't want to segregate it out in a way that you can already, you know, it's a functionality that's already built into QuickBooks and you can run reports by that too. Now in this, I can't run a report to say customer type and have a column commercial, residential, and total without using the uh, class, okay? So that's something to think about. But if you just need to be able to see how much do you make on commercial, negative 1500 this month to date, and we're going to modify this and say filter it and change it from customer type commercial to residential. Okay, let's take a look at that. Wow, we make a lot more money in residential than we do commercial. So maybe we should focus our energy there. So that's a way to use the customer type um, in this. Now, again, you can use classes to do the exact same thing. It'll just, when you do a class report, it'll be class A, class B, and total. Okay. So how do we set up classes? The first thing, you want to go up to edit and preferences. And then you're going to go up to accounting and click on my company preferences here. You have to be logged in as admin or someone with admin rights. You also have to be in single user mode. And we're going to turn on classes, okay? You can also check this box, prom box prompt to assign classes. So if you accidentally forget to put a class on a certain line, it'll prompt you and say, hey, there's a line that doesn't have a class on it. So that's probably a good idea, especially in the beginning while you're getting used to it, okay? 
So now once you do that, when you open up your pay, or I'm sorry, when you open up your enter bills, you're going to have that little class column. And when you open up your create invoices, if it's not on here, you do have it up top here so you can classify the whole thing. But if it's not on your columns here, you can customize it, choose custom data layout, and on my columns tab, add the class to the screen. Okay. So now we have the class there. All right. So that's how you set it up. Then under list here, you'll also have your class list. Once you turn that, you know, you check that box, you have your class list here. So here's our different classes that we have. Uh, one of the things that's nice about classes is they're similar to a item or a chart of accounts list. You can currently go subs, subs, or subs of subs, you know, so you can do different. So if you have, um, I've seen again, a lot of people who do it as an internal department, so they can say marketing and then they say payroll costs, you know, admin office costs, uh, let's see, travel costs under marketing. So they have sub classes under the marketing class. Okay. So again, we can say, if you want to set up a new one, you just come in here, new. It's just a title. It's a free type there. Uh, new class. Okay. I can add it there and you have your new classes. All right. So on the report side of things, you can always go in company financial, you can run it by a class. Okay, one of the nice things if you do use classes is you wanna run this report probably monthly so that you can come in here and see what is unclassified and classify it so that everything is under the proper columns that it should be under. All right, so there's a lot of reports that you can use by class. Any report you can filter by class or most reports you can filter by class. Excuse me, I shouldn't say any. All right. Uh, you can also, when you come up and set up your budgets, you can set it up by class. I'm going to create a new budget here, do the profit and loss, and I can do it by class. Okay. And I'm going to create it from scratch for now. Pops up here and I can come in and say, I want a new budget for my remodel class. And then I can fill in the budget. All right, so then when you run your reports and you do your budget and forecast, budget versus actual reports, you wanna make sure you run the report here and you do still need to go in, modify it, choose the filter, choose the right class. Oops, we said remodel, right? Remodel, okay, and then it picks up that budget and only those items that are under the remodel class. Okay, so that is a little bit about how to set up classes and what's the best way to use them.